welcome to the update of broadcasting corn as a food plot. Now, as you can see behind me, we have a fairly good stand of corn. Now, this is just a quick update, if you will, on the video we did about basically you don't need to use all the big farm equipment to get good row crops in a food plot. So let's dive in on what we learned and give you a little quick tour on how it turned out. So as you can see behind me, we have quite a bit standing. We didn't quite get nearly what you would get and produce when you do your row planting with like a planter because we had a lot of inconsistent depths with all the seeds and stuff that we put in here. But for not having all that big farm equipment, I would say this is awesome. This is just a testament here to think outside the box and you know if you feel like you have a roadblock of you know planting corn or doing a certain project on your land try something experiment and you know challenge the status quo this is awesome to not bring a planter in here i mean this means you can get way back into spots that you normally wouldn't get so i think that's huge on what this opens up for possibilities. Now, I'm looking around here. We got a fair bit of cobs that grew and grew kernels, but our deer population and the amount we planted were just absolutely devoured. So I'm taking this in and ob observing what's happening here with our food that we plant on this property and saying, all right, we need to plant way more so we can go through the entire season into winter so they've got food after season two because that's part of our goal here on this farm is make sure we can provide good quality habitat throughout the entire year. So a lot of cobs on the ground. I'll show you, as you can see, all of it got eaten, but we did have stuff to grow, which is super cool to see. We just broadcasted this. Now, we got a fair bit of corn cobs to uh, produce by broadcasting this roughly an acre food plot. Now, what we did is we we actually tilled this so it was tilled up dirt and just it up and then all i did is took a hand broadcaster i mean simplest thing 20 bucks at any you know farm or country store out there and seeded it in we did probably i'd have to go back to the other video but you know, we definitely did way more than 10 pounds of corn an acre, which is typically what you would use if you were putting it up in a planter and row planting it. But um, what we have here is probably 20, maybe plus pounds per acre. And if I were to do this again, I would do even more. Just a slight bit more than what I did. So we're gonna go back to the previous video and make sure to give you an accurate update on like what our suggestion would be for the seed rate you might want to try using. Once we got the seed in the ground then we came through with a little mini disc that I can mount on the back of the four-wheeler and all it is is just it puts pressure down into the ground and then as you as you move the four-wheeler across the dirt, it's just turning up the dirt a little bit. And so all I did was disc in the seeds as I went. And then I just changed that depth to what I thought I needed to get the seeds as far down as I could. And it worked out really, really well. I mean, we got corn all over the place here. I mean, wherever we planted it, it came up. 
Now the big thing that happened with this is we planted this two weeks too late. We tilled up the ground, we didn't get a chance to get in here, and the soil moisture just dropped so far. And uh, there was hardly any moisture in the soil when we planted. And so it basically it didn't germinate until we had a good rain. And then it was like basically three, four weeks behind because it just didn't germinate that instantly. Like it was very sporadic wherever it germinated. It was very inconsistent. So keep that in mind. When you get a chance to plant, plant as early as you can. Make sure there's good soil moisture. It doesn't necessarily have to have rained. Make sure there's good soil moisture in the, in the soil. Um, always try to do it around rain too helps, but we just didn't get that lucky. So, um, other than that, it turned out pretty good. I would, I am going to do this again for sure. Um, and it actually ended up coming up in rows, even though I just broadcasted it because I dissed it and those discs almost naturally pulled those seeds into line and uh, turned out really good. So definitely give it a try. Not a bad way to get corn on your property and not having to have thousands of dollars into equipment. This is an absolute testament to that. And um, a lot of things we're gonna do next year. We're gonna do more fertilizer. We didn't put any fertilizer really into this. We sprayed it only once. I would, I, again, for next year, I would definitely spray this a little earlier before you get too many weeds. The weeds are absolutely terrible. So we're probably gonna do a pre-emergent before we before we plant and then we'll probably come through again and kill once or twice as we go through the early summer, midsummer, And then uh, we'll actually add fertilizer and stuff like that this time. We didn't do any lime fertilizer or nothing. This is pretty good soil. Um, a spot we did it on the other side of the river, nowhere near the quality of soil that's over here and it just did not work. So recap here of what we learned by broadcasting this corn. Make sure to do a soil test. We're gonna do that right now here today, if not later in the, if we don't get snow, we'll try to get a soil sample or early next spring. And that's just gonna help you understand what you need to do. Because another big important thing to do is amend the soil in the beginning for your pH and make sure the soil is adequate so it can actually take in the nutrients and provide the nutrients to all the crops that you plant. So, soil test, amend your soil in the beginning for the adequate pH and get in the seeds well in advance in, in times when you have moisture in the soil or a good rain, get it in the soil when you get that because it is going to make or break you for the rest of the season. And then also come back, kill your weeds as best as you can and fertilize. Other than that, I mean, for not doing a heck of a lot, we ended up with something and that makes a big difference. And uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions about how to do food plots, any projects on your land to improve the hunting, leave a comment and uh, reach out to me, Honeyland Mike, and I'd be happy to hear from you and hopefully answer some of your questions. So be safe and we'll see you on the land.